Um, also to say that um, Bettina and I both have children in our houses. I don't. Oh, you don't. Well done. Uh, I've got children in my house, um, but they've been told that they can only come in very quietly. They were asking if they could crawl underneath the screen, which I said was a little bit unhelpful. If there are any domestic interruptions, we apologise in advance. Hmm. It's all part of the territory. Of it the is. From home, so completely forgivable, I think. Thank you. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I, mm. I'm accused by my children of being nice to people outside in public and on the phone. And then as soon as I stop talking to the people, then I get really grumpy again. So yeah. <laughs> it's luck for us on these calls. Yeah. All up for the all up for the strangers that you can't see. You get all the niceness. You used it all up. Okay, one more minute. People, people coming and going. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so should we make a start? So, yeah. um, shall I launch? Daisy, do you launch. Okay. Launch. Launch. Oh, you've attacked you you need to enable me. God. This is when. This is when. Oh, Richard has only got audio for some reason. Okay. Um oh god. I don't know why that is. Um right, let me. Share screen. Okay, so I'm gonna, Daisy can share the screen and then oh. Richard, I will be with you now to try and work out why you can only, oh, you've gone. Gone, come back. Um, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Bettina and Dottie, yes, great. Okay, so we are Plastic Free Hackney. Um, my name is Daisy, um, Bettina is also She's below me on my screen, but she might be somewhere else on your screen. Um, and we've got Dottie from the um, Hackney Council recycling team. Um, so, and here we are in action and, and days when we could stand very close to each other. Um, we are, we've been running since uh, 2018 and we are a not-for-profit campaign group committed to creating a cleaner and greener Hackney. Uh, so we are, we're not employed by the council, we're doing it for the absolute love of waste reduction, in, all in the name of waste reduction. Um, we run um, monthly litter picks. Um, this was a litter pick that we did recently on Clapton Commons um, in, up in North Hackney. Um, and uh, they are very popular, our litter picks. This is one that we did um, in October, I think it was about October 2018, uh, it was brilliant. We always run our monthly litter pick from the same spot outside the Princess of Wales pub, um, just off the Lee Bridge Road. Um, and normally it's been on the last Sunday of the month, but at the moment they're a bit on hiatus. We're not allowed to operate in groups. Um, but we are loaning out litter picks kits. So if you would like one of those, then send us an email um, to hello at Plastic Free Hackney. Um, so this was a pretty grim sight uh, up at the lock. Um, we had an excellent guy who came along with his boat. His name I can't remember. Bettina, can you remember his name? It'll come to me. I want to say Richard, but I don't think it was Richard. It was. Um, and that was Martin. Um, Martin. So that was then, and then two hours later, a wonderful clean canal. Um, uh, we have had some of our list picks have been uh, really well attended. We've had uh, up to 100 people. Um, it's kind of they're very inclusive and very fun for all the family. Um, and this is an example of an enormous amount of uh, litter and plastic pollution that we collected. Um, so we also um, do uh, community awareness events, um, talking, which are really enjoyable, talking to um, people 
just sort of on the street. Uh, sometimes these are in um, council run events, talking to people about how they can make swaps and changes to reduce their plastic and everyone sharing their tips. We're very much about kind of trying to share the knowledge that we've all got. Um, and we work with business as well, talking to them about how they can reduce their single use plastics. Um, we've really enjoyed, we've recently been running some workshops. This is again in the days before uh, COVID. So people are sitting closely together and they're quite nice um, events, quite like, it's a bit of a, a science lesson feeling to them about how to make your own plastic free products. Um, so they're very low waste. They're also much, much cheaper than things uh, items that you buy in the supermarket um, and obviously aren't full of the nasty chemicals that you would find. So here we are making uh, low cost plastic free toiletries um, and we are going to be running some more of those workshops online in uh, September um, and then I think another couple in November. Um, and here's somebody who's very pleased with her scrub that she's made. We've also been running some um, excellent plastic free periods workshops talking to people about reusable menstrual products. Um, we are just keen about basically reusing, reusing what you have, reducing your waste and, and teaching people how to recycle properly. Um, plastic pollution is a very, it's a very tangible way of seeing the negative effects of human behavior on our planet. And, um, you know, reducing your own plastic obviously isn't going to be the solution to the climate crisis but it's something that you can we all really tangibly associate with the areas that we live in and i think um that's been particularly pertinent during the pandemic um seeing how how our parks and precious green spaces which you know have been so important to us living in urban areas um whilst whilst our access to the outside has been limited and seeing how um how there's been with uh, a lot of popularity and a lot of use, the quantity of littering that's gone up. Um, and that it's really depressing, you know, nobody wants to go out for their walk to see their park kind of trash with everyone else's picnic. Um, so we, I'd say we believe passionately in the urgent need for waste reduction. And we are, Patina and I share an authentic and passionate love for bins, um, something that we both wear with pride. Uh, it's impossible to fake. Uh, there is, uh, I'm just going to play now a short but very informative film from um, made by Friends of the Earth about um, plastic pollution and um, the the problem with plastics, both from from the point of extraction right through to disposal. So, ah, oh yes, our website. Our website is also our website is currently being updated, but you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, so, here we go. In a little over a century, plastics have transformed the way we live. From wind turbines to aircraft fuels, they've helped build the modern world. Today, the latest versatile, durable plastics help us to do more with less, reducing energy use, emissions, and waste. And the fresh innovation and infrastructure they bring enables the creation of new jobs. But there's a problem. 40% of plastic in Europe is single-use packaging. And since the start of mass production in the 1950s, we humans have produced 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic in all, weighing the same as around 80 million blue whales. And the majority has ended up in landfills, incinerated or polluting the planet. But the problem starts way before the plastic reaches our bins and rivers. Over 99% of plastics come from chemicals sourced from oil and gas production. The more plastics we make, the more oil and gas we use. So it's no surprise that many of the oil and gas companies behind the climate crisis are investing heavily in plastics production. Meanwhile, the expansion of oil and gas production has led to a dramatic fall in the cost of raw materials for plastics, and output is on the rise. Cheap fracked gas is also driving huge new investments in America and worldwide, with $164 billion funding 264 new facilities or expansion projects in the US alone. And with a wave of investment in China, Europe and the Middle East, the global infrastructure for a new generation of production is well underway. So, is the coming increase in plastic production sustainable? And are the benefits worth the cost? 
there are few bigger long-term threats to our planet than greenhouse gases. These gases are already increasing global temperatures, melting ice caps, raising sea levels, and threatening coastal cities. Right now, the production of plastic is responsible for 5% of global emissions. And in the years ahead, the harmful gases from plastic production are set to grow almost 300%, meaning it will soon be a bigger contributor to climate change than aviation and shipping put together. In the last decade, humans produced more disposable plastic than in the entire 20th century, and we can all see the results. Yet the leading oil and gas companies plan to increase plastic production by an extra 40%. And this is a problem for all of us. Even if we could recycle every last piece of plastic we use, the damage caused by making it can't be undone. So as well as tackling the growing crisis of plastic waste, we also need to confront what happens at the start of the plastic's life cycle. The time to act is now. Because when the world's new plastics factories become a reality, they'll threaten the future of the planet with accelerated climate change. Friends of the Earth is working to change all of this for good. Join us and be part of the solution. So it's a rather sobering film. Um, uh, partly in response to this, um, one of the things, one of the reasons why we are holding this event is um, talking about uh, the working up to the shift that the council will be doing, um, reducing waste connections from every week to every fortnight. Um, when when our bins are audited, which means some lucky person goes through a black bin waste, um, over half the household waste that we throw away as rubbish could have been recycled. Um, so in spring 2021, the council is switching to um, collecting uh, waste every two weeks, and that's only for street level properties. Uh, the idea of this is to increase um, recycling within the borough so that that 50%, that, that half of our waste level is reduced. Um, and also to reduce the amount that is sent to incineration. In Hackney, um, our, our bin waste uh, doesn't go to landfill, it goes to an incinerator, a giant incinerator in um, Edmonton that we have, Bettina and I have visited and it was a bit like going and looking in the mouth of hell. Um, sort, of, sort of image you don't forget. Um, so it's really, so the imperative is, it's not, it's not a cost saving measure, it's about, um, reducing the amount that we are, I mean, increasing the amount that we are recycling and reducing the amount that we are throwing away. Um, and in London, there are 15 London boroughs that have already switched to these fortnightly collections, the recycling rates have increased. And a good um, way of also looking at this in the context of the UK is that um, Wales um, performs as the highest country in the UK with highest um, recycling rates. And they, in many parts of Wales, they now have their waste collected every three weeks and they've now got recycling rates of 64%. So that is, those are the good things that we are pitching towards. And I'm now going to hand over to Bettina about why you should care. Yes, so if the video wasn't sort of shocking enough and you know, you kind of didn't really know anyway why you should care about recycling, there's just a couple more um, bits that I want to mention really. Um, so. It, Daisy touched upon the sort of incineration um, aspect of, of waste that, you know, if we don't recycle, it's incinerated, um, which is also seen as a method of energy from waste. So, um, you know, the, the, all the our rubbish is burnt, but that, but that energy that is created is then used to heat homes. So you can think that that's a good positive spin on things. However, it doesn't address all of the other factors um, that have gone into the production of making that plastic in the first place. Um, and also the resultant sort of carbon emissions from that incinerator are huge. Um, and it's just an incredibly unsustainable way to sort of deal with our waste just by burning it. You know, there are, there are really valuable raw materials within that waste and just to burn it is really bad, um, if, to put it bluntly. Um, you know, our waste doesn't go to landfill. I think another common sort of misconception is, oh, it's just being buried and, you know, there's ideas that we can in future um, mine our landfill for those raw 
recyclable materials. Well, that doesn't really happen anymore either. And if it were to go to landfill, there'd be major issues with um, sort of methane production from there as well. If food waste goes into there, people don't compost their food waste because they feel like um, um, it's, it's going, it'll rot anyway. But if it's rot, if it rots in a landfill environment, in an anaerobic situation, it produces um, methane, which is a much more potent greenhouse gas. Um, so yeah, so that's it. And then, I mean, finally, from a sort of um, financial point of view as well, you know, we're in a situation where councils are really under pressure, um, which has a knock-on effect on the residents in our borough. So I think what people don't possibly know either is that collecting our waste is a statutory obligation by Hackney Council. There are many things that they do, which are just kind of a, a sort of nicety on the top, like libraries and things like that. But whereas collecting our waste is a statutory obligation and the more that we recycle, the less that that costs. It's, there's kind of a hierarchy of cost when it comes to um, waste and sending it to the incinerator is the most um, expensive method of removing our waste. So the more we can recycle, the more that we can reduce the amount of cost, you know, to ourselves as well. We effectively pay for it through our council tax. We can let lessen that burden on the council, which means that in these sort of cash strapped times where the council is struggling to find um, funds for other things, you know, this is one way that we can sort of cut those costs. Um, but yeah, so that was just my final few bits. But now on to the quiz. This is a quiz about plastics, so the main event. Hello, Heidi. Um, <laughs> running away in the background so we are your quiz masters for the day on plastics um we hope you enjoy it we hope you learn something we hope um you know that you feel sort of you come away from this doing something right and good so without further ado our first question and what i'm going to do is um there will be a poll so you'll see a poll should um come up on your screen now and so i'll read the question during that time you can answer that poll um just it should be should be fairly straightforward um if Dottie, can you confirm that it's a straightforward can you see it there um so it's yeah, there I me i can see it there okay great so our first question of the day what do all of these containers have in common and which bin should they go in is it a they're all plastic and can be put in the recycling bin is it b if you wash them you can put them in the recycling bin is it C, they all have food in them and can't be recycled? Or D, they're all black plastic and therefore need to go in the dustbin? If you'd like to cast your votes now, please. We should have some sort of doo -doo 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 music in the background. Um, 25%, 75%, that's everybody. Right, so I'm gonna end polling. So we had, 83% with D, and that is the correct answer. 83%. So 17% said if you can wash them, they can put in the recycling bin. That is the wrong answer. They are all black plastics and should go in the bin. Um, and the reason why this is um, is because the um, in the in the materials recycling facility or the MRF for short, um, a lot of the plastics are so they are sorted by lasers. Um, and the optical, the automatic optical sorting machines um, are unable to distinguish between black plastics. Um, they use a near infrared um, light, which is absorbed by the carbon black pigment, which is traditionally used to color the plastics, um, which effectively makes them invisible to the sorter and leads to them being rejected um, and sent for incineration. So the, the MRF, the MRF does sort of still send things to be incinerated. If it ends up there, it's not a guaranteed um, thing that it will be recycled. So unfortunately, they do need to be put into the dustbin, into your residual waste bins. Um, you know, if you're sort of trying to cut down on your plastics or your black plastics, you want to recycle as much as you can, then we would sort of recommend trying to look for sort of other coloured packaging. A lot of supermarkets now are starting to use um, clear plastics instead, or just different colours. You know, sometimes you see green um, trays for meat instead. Um, so you can try and look for different colours or clear plastics, which will be recycled. Um, alternatively, you can, if you're buying sort of raw meat or fish from the deli, um, from supermarkets, if they've got a deli counter, you can bring your own Tupperware. So that'll cut out all the plastics completely. Um, I'm not 100% sure what they're doing in these 
COVID times, but in normal times, you are able to take your Tupperware and they will fill it. And so obviously that is a complete plastic free switch. Okay, on to question two. So it's pizza night. It's the end of a long week and you decide to treat you and your family to a pizza. You pick up a bag of salad on your way to the checkout because obviously it's now a healthy meal. It's one of your five a day there. Um, so now the pizza and salad have all been eaten. What do you do with the packaging? Do you A, chuck it all in the bin? Because quite frankly, I'm too full to care. B, chuck it in the recycling. Again, I'm too full to care. Or C, do you separate the box and the film, recycling the box and putting the film in the bin? The salad bag always also goes in the bin. I'm never too full to separate my waste. Okay, you can... Tina, have you launched the poll? I'm launching the poll now. The poll is launched. Fingers on buzzers. I wish we had buzzers. <laughs> Look at that, 100%. 100% the right answer. That is correct. Sadly, that thin plastic film, the salad bag and the pizza base, if it's a polystyrene pizza base, which they often are, needs to go in the bin as these can't be recycled. Um, if the base is made of cardboard and it's not too heavily stained with sort of, you know, like the grease from the pizza, then that can go into the pizza, um, that can go into the recycling bin. Oh, Eleni can't see the pole. Oh no. Um, I will have a look if I can work that out, but possibly. Let me finish, I'll read this out and then I will um, get back to you on that. Um, so yeah, if you, if you do home compost, um, then, and the cardboard is too greasy that it can't go into your recycling bin, then you're able to rip that up and add that to your compost heap, which will add a sort of beneficial brown layer to your compost heap. But um, otherwise that needs to go in the bin. So we're putting the box and the card in the recycling, as you all know. Um, and now for a quick bonus question. Um, a bonus question. Once again, another week, I've forgotten to eat the salad and it's a slimy mess in the bottom of the fridge. What do I do with the salad? Do I chuck the whole lot in the bin and forget about it? Or do I empty the salad into the food waste caddy, and put the bag in the dustbin, telling myself to stop buying bagged salad? It's a waste of food and money. And once again, um, we've got all so far 100%, four out of four, but Eleni can't see the poll, which I'm just gonna try and figure out why. Um, um, so Eleni, if, you, um, if your Zoom is on full screen, maybe if you try and shrink it, the poll might appear. It might be hidden behind your sort of Zoom screen. So if you can give that a go, um, that might work. Um, okay, so just see if Eleni can find that. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, and there's a quick sort of alternative, all of you know, to throw away your bag salad into the bin, if you do throw it away at all. But um, as an alternative bought salad, growing your own salad can be quite easy. Um, you can also grow it in sort of any space from a window box to a windowsill. Um, Though if you eat loads of salads, it won't be enough, but green grocers do tend to send, sell unbagged salad, um, which has the benefit of being cheaper. It also, um, bagged salad also has a chlorine rinse before it gets put in the bag, which is a bit grim to kill all the sort of bee seeds. So, you know, this way you get a sort of unchlorinated salad by buying it from the green grocer. Um, and the top tip, this is my ultimate top tip for keeping salad fresh for longer, is if you submerge it in water and you keep it in the fridge. Um, I've put some pretty sort of, what I thought sort of salad on its last legs into the fridge in a bowl of water and it comes back the next day like crisp and amazing. So you can either store it like sort of flowers in a jar and you can do this with asparagus or broccoli or loads of other sort of leafy vegetables or submerge it in a bowl of water and it will stay much fresher for much longer. So I thoroughly recommend that tip. So I'll end that poll. Um, if Eleni can... Do you want me to do question three and then you can see if you can do Eleni's? Yes, you do question three and I'll try and help Eleni. Right, question three. 
It's week 654 of lockdown and you're asked one more time what's for dinner. You might just spontaneously combust. It's time for a takeaway. Which of the following containers can be recycled after use? Ah, now, Bettina, can you launch the poll? Yes, I can launch the poll. Thank you. Is it A? Hmm, looks like plastic, but says it's compostable on the base. Is it B? Feels like cardboard. It says it's also compostable and is called bagasse. C, an aluminium tray. D, polystyrene. E, cardboard. F, plastic. So you should have your poll up or not. I don't think the poll has sprung up. Bettina, can you press the poll? Yes, I'm launching. I've launched. Launching. Launch. Um, the question was, which of the following can be recycled? Can be recycled. Can. So, the results are changing, people are changing their minds. <laughs> Don't consult the internet, consult one another. Yeah. Family members, housemates, pets, plastic packaging. Right, I'm going to end the polling. Everyone got their answers in and I'm ending the polling. Dunk. Are you doing the answers, Daisy? Or? Oh, I'm going to press the button so you can do the chat. Okay. And the answer is C and F. Um, so yeah, it's not just cans, deodorants, foil tra trays, bottle tops and tin foil are all made of recyclable aluminium. And this is all infinitely recyclable. Um, foil trays, um, a great choice when choosing a soft drink or a takeaway instead of that plastic option because it can just be recycled again and again and again um all that you need to do is just empty them um, and give them a rinse so just like a dunk in the washing up bowl when you finish or wipe them clean before recycling um unfortunately the rest should be put in the dustbin preferably with any leftover food waste put into your food caddy um and the, so the same with f as well that can also be recycled so and cardboard, actually, for the people that have answered um, cardboard. So um, if you're a very diligent recycler and you promise to empty all of that food waste into your food bin, and so it's pretty much like a rinsed and cleaned out container, you can also put that cardboard into the recycling bin. It has a very thin layer of biofilm in it, but it's a very thin layer. So actually, um, it can be it can be recycled. So. But this is this is a little tip for the diligent recyclers because a lot of people just will take that as just chuck the whole thing in so clean it out and it can be um but i'm just gonna give you a little um yes yeah, so, yes that's right it's the cardboard should be okay but clean it out um and now i'm just gonna have a little word about a so a is the compostable vegware that which is a brand name for it so you, you know it's different brands but often it's called vegware um, so this is made from plants using a renewable or like lower carbon recycled or reclaimed material. So there are different types of vegware options out there. Um, and it's designed to be commercially compostable with a food waste where accepted. However, this is the, this is the problem that it's not accepted anywhere in the UK at all. There are a few trial areas in Scotland, but here in England, it's just not acceptable at all to be and in your food waste. Um, you know, also vegware, the, the way it's sold, it's it's kind of, it's it's great if you're in a closed environment. So if you were at a music festival where you can very much kind of manage your waste, it, it, it's, it, it could be easier. However, you know, most of these products with vegware are takeaway containers. And by the very nature of a takeaway, you're handing out a product which is being spread far and wide and you have no, you have absolutely no idea where that's gonna go. Um, so, and that's where it gets confusing because certain people might think that it's, um, 
you know, you look at it and you think, oh, it's plastic. So I'll put it in my recycling bin. But that all that does is it contaminates the recycling. And if it does end up, it'll be sifted out at the mirth and incinerated. Um, it can't go in your food waste. If it, if it reaches the, um, the digester, it will be taken out there and incinerated. So um, it basically all just needs to go in the bin, which seems a bit of a waste of time if you're buying a product based on its green credentials. Um, so yeah, it doesn't use fossil fuels as its source of oil, you know, like regular plastic. However, there are lots of issues with diverting land that could be used to grow crops for food, for you know, human consumption. If we're then using that land to grow crops to make plastic to throw away, that kind of doesn't really make sense either. So again, um, you know, we would suggest using your own takeaway. Like I go to my local big fan of my local takeaway high on Lower Clapton Road um, and they will accept my 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 own Tupperware to take the um, takeaway in so that will evolve eliminate all your plastic or otherwise issues. Um, I want to I want to pop in with a little anecdote. Yes. Um, my my, my okay. fun anecdote is uh, so to great fanfare last year um, the Palace of Westminster um, all the um, buildings in Westminster, the government buildings in Westminster, switched to using vegware because it was deemed to be, you know, a green and environmentally sound choice. Um, and during the seven months that they were using vegware, and so this was in a closed environment when everyone was, there was a lot of signage around and everybody knew what the transition had been. During that seven month period, every single collection of the vegware items had to be sent to the incinerator because the level of contamination was too high. So people putting items that couldn't be composted in. So it's just a real, a very good example of the fact it just, it doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, and so now on to our next question. Why do we not recycle by numbers? It's a question often asked, um, is it A? numbers what numbers b don't we i do or c it's complicated best just to follow the council's recycling guidelines fingers on buzzers aha oh three four it's complicated best just to follow the council's recycling guidelines 100 percent Great, congratulations. Yes, that's right. Um, so the reason why is, um, so the, the so the MRF, the MRF and the NLWA, the North London Waste Authority, um, the reason they give that we don't do, that we don't recycle by number alone is that it isn't a good description of what can be recycled. So technically all number one plastics can be recycled, but then that would mean that, you know, like a huge, water dispenser cooler thing could be added to the green sack but they can't because it's too big for the mechanical sorting facility so you know we're working within a system here it's um you know technically everything in the world can be recycled but you know we're dealing in systems we're dealing in world markets you know they've got you just can't recycle that huge thing it's just not possible at the facility so that's why um it's better just to to go by the items that are sort of saved on the website. Um, so, which you can see a few images of here. So, that's that. Um, next question. Oh no. Yep. Um, so, can the following items be recycled? They are all made out of a common product polystyrene, can they be recycled? Correct answer. No is the answer. Um, yeah, they can't be recycled. So um, polystyrene is one of the most, most widely used plastics. Around several million tonnes are produced each year. Um, it's used for all the kind of things that you can see in the images, such as packing peanuts, as well as sort of CD and DVD cases, um, you know, coffee cups, takeout food containers. However, 
what those what polystyrene is made of that building block styrene um is considered is a probable human carcinogen um with a variety of toxic effects with several epido epidemiological studies suggesting that there might be association between styrene exposure and an increase of leukemia and lympho lymphoma although this evidence is interesting so what happens in the case of um, when the styrene gets heated, it's when the polystyrene gets heated. So in the case of a takeaway container or a hot drink, you're putting a hot drink into polystyrene, which then heats, heats it up, releasing the sort of styrene, um, which isn't great. So it's also really tricky to be recycled. Um, you know, it's mainly, polystyrene is mainly air. It's this sort of extruded plastic, and that makes it really easy to get sample, which is why it's used for heat for us. But it's... Um, it's, it, it means there's, can everyone hear me? Apparently my speaker's not working. Can you I hear can me? I can now, I can oh. now. It's an issue with me. Now you're mute. And now you're back on. Um, so yeah, so. Um, now so you're much, much clearer. Okay, great. Uh, oh, that's Polystyrene it can be recycled, um, but most of it ends up being incinerated because it's really expensive to transport. You know, it's a product that's mainly air. So you're transporting this very lightweight, but very bulky and voluminous product. Um, and because it doesn't biodegrade readily, it enters landfill in the environment, including the ocean, where it will stay for a very long time. As anybody has been anywhere, <laughs> you will see polystyrene blowing around. You know, it's that property that makes it lightweight that causes it to be such a burden, you know, it enters the canal, we're forever fishing out, you know, these broken down polystyrene balls that just get everywhere and it's just so pernicious. And if you ban one plastic immediately, it would be polystyrene because it's just so environmentally damaging. Um, it's also, you know, so <laughs> didn't really touch on it before, but there's a real social justice issue to plastic. You know, the, the, this everyday plastic that we use without a second thought, and you know, it's just this cheap and meaningless product to us, is affecting people around the world. So just a couple of months ago, in May, we were in lockdown, 11 people were killed and a further 800 people were taken to hospital after a massive gas leak at a chemical plant making polystyrene products. So the leak, it was a LG's, LG polymers plant, so LG, the same sort of tech company, they also have chemical plants um, in India, in Andhra Pradesh, um had this gas leak and it sort of demonstrated the toxicity of polystyrene production on community residents so government officials have warned residents not to use groundwater or eat perishable foods from the area due to contamination concerns and the effects for this is completely unknown how long this will last for it could be years and have long-lasting consequences for those communities um and that's the you know the polluting side of our cheap of our demand for cheap plastics um, is felt by people of colour all around the world, especially the global south. And it's something that most people, we just don't think about, you know, and now that this is the Black Lives Matter campaign at the forefront, um, it's really important that, you know, we highlight that this environmental racism effectively is happening across the world in poor communities. Um, and that the sort of the true cost of our demand for cheap plastics is basically being borne out by people that have no control over it. Um, so there's a real issue there um, why, you know, this is another major reason why we're so sort of down on plastic, why we think it should be um, reduced greatly. So that's that. Um, on to the next question. So our next question, multi-layered packaging. What do crisps, cat food, baby food and soft drinks all have in common? A. They're all items on my weekly shopping list. B, they're all things that I don't need to buy. C, their packaging is an environmental nightmare and they all need to go in the bin. D, they sound like a horrible dinner combination. Or E, they all look like aluminium and are fully recyclable. I have launched the poll. Heidi actually said that she thought they looked like an all right dinner combination. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't think she was concentrating on the cat food. 
<laughs> I think it was the crisps. <laughs> the crisps and the Capri Sun. Yeah, that sounds good. Capri Sun. Yeah. Any more? Any more going in for a? Oh, one more. Great. Okay, so we're going to end the polling now, and the, the answer is C. At seventy-five percent of res respondents getting it correct. So um, yes, all of these are multi-layered materials. Uh, plastic being just one of them. And whilst everything can technically be recycled, um, the world of recycling works on the basis of markets. Um, and if there is a value in that product, it will be recycled. Um, but these mixed materials are so complex and so costly to break down into their constituent parts to recycle that it's simply not worth it and therefore have zero value. Um, but there are kind of alternatives that we could use. Um, so, you know, baby foods, there are jarred baby foods that have been out since the beginning of time. You know, mainly they're just pureed stuff. So we can just puree the stuff at home. Um, or baby lead weaning, which is you just hand them the apple in the first place and be done with it. Um, so yeah, pet food, um, pet food comes in tins. It can also be bought in bulk. There's a shop called Bulk Market in Hackney Central, um, which sells loose products um, they have a pet food section so it can be bought by there um, you know even sort of soft drinks those Capri Sun kind of products you know you can buy buy soft drinks you know if you're going to go for one a better option even would be a plastic bottle but obviously you can make your own concentrate and have it in a reusable water bottle um, crisps are probably the trickiest one but um, you know you could buy a big big multi, not a multi-pack, like don't buy a multi-pack because effectively you're just buying a big plastic bag full of little plastic bags, um, but big bags and sort of portion them out. Um, popcorn, I make quite a lot of popcorn at home for my kids as an alternative to crisps, which you can buy loose um, and you need like a quarter of a cup and that feeds two kids. So it's really cheap as well. Um, and what else going to talk about? There is a company called Two Farmers. They have started making crisps in compostable crisp packets. If you want to try those out, so but I must admit my crisp consumption sadly has gone down remarkably because I love crisps, but feel guilty eating them. Right. <laughs> so on to the next question. Question eight. Which of these plastics are the most easily recyclable? Is it A, plastic milk cartons, B, plastic soft drink bottles, C, fruit punnets, D, yogurt pots, or E, meat trays? Okay, so the answer is da, 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 A and B. Um, so as I previously mentioned, items get recycled because they have a value and it's sort of plastic milk cartons, this HDPE plastic and um, PET plastic water bottles that are worth the most um, on these recycling markets and therefore are the most recycled plastics. Um, but even though these items are recycled um, and also, I mean, all these other products, sorry, just mentioned before. So the other products can be recycled as well, but these are just the best, the most popular recycled products. Um, but saying that, even though they are the most commonly recycled products and they have the most worth and all the rest of it, um, you know, they're not really being effectively recycled. Um, and when I mean effectively recycled, I mean, when you buy a plastic water bottle or whatever it is that you buy, you know, it's very rare that you see that that bottle has been made out of any recycled material at all. You know, sometimes it will say, our oh, pet recycled PET, if it has been, but most of the time it's just virgin plastic. So for all of Coca-Cola's, you know, big statements that they, all their bottles are 100% recyclable, that's true, but they're not using any of that recycled content in their new bottles. So it's not being effectively recycled, you know, one bottle being turned into a new bottle. What is happening to these products is they're being downcycled. So they're being turned into things like drain pipes or benches or fleece jackets. 
which, you know, to a certain extent, that's great. You know, they're being used as a resource, but that's a kind of one way trip to the incinerator. Once that drain pipe, which is probably black, um, breaks, that's going straight into the incinerator. Um, those fleece jackets, every time you wash them, you're releasing thousands of pieces of microplastic um, into the oceans, you know, through your washing machine. So they're not ideal either. Um, and, you know, whereas other products, you know, like aluminium can be recycled infinitely. Plastic has a limited sort of lifespan. It can only be recycled a few times before it's unable to be recycled again. Um, so basically, you know, recycling isn't the answer to our problem. We need to be reducing the amount of plastic that we're using in the first place. We can't recycle our way out of this problem. It's kind of too much. Um, there have been some moves by the government to introduce legislation that would either remove some of these pointless plastics completely, such as stirrers. I don't know if anybody heard it, remembers from the news, they, they were going to ban straws and stirrers. Um, and there was also some new legislation coming in that would force producers to use a minimum of 30% recycled materials, plastics in their new materials. However, um, because of the pandemic, all of these have been pushed back. And in the meantime, just more and more and more and more plastic is being pumped into the environment. So we need these, we need this legislation to come in um, and much more far reaching legislation to come in very quickly. Um, next question. Um, which of these cannot be recycled? A, bubble wrap, B, padded envelopes, C, Tupperware, D, plastic toys, or E, online shopping envelopes. Cast your votes now. I'm really sort of channeling Chris Tarrant. In my head anyway. In my head, this is basically who wants to be a millionaire. I don't know if that's coming across. Uh, you, need, you need some music. Da -na -na -na. Yeah, we need the, yeah, we need the soundtrack. I'm going to have a soundtrack <laughs> next time. That wouldn't be annoying, would it? No, 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 no. In my head, that sounds very realistic to the actual. Yeah. Okay, so we've got. Or you could go for the. Da, 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 yeah. Um. Any more? Any more? Any more for any more? No. Nope. So we're going to end the polling on that note. So the answer is all of them. <laughs> None of these items can be recycled. Um, they are, however, useful resources. Um, you know, are you able to reuse them when you're posting stuff out instead of buying new jiffy bags or whatever, or padded envelopes? Um, or do you know someone that sends out a lot of things in the post that could reuse them? Um, or could you keep them together in a bundle? You know, if you were to put on free cycle, 25 jiffy bags and a load of bubble, bubble wrap i'm pretty sure someone will bite your arm off for that quicker than you can say free cycle um you know they're really popular items that just kind of get wasted quite a lot um sadly if toys and tupperware are broken then it's the incinerator in the sky i'm afraid or edmonton to be precise um and yes it's exactly like that scene in toy story so if possible the toys in your homes can be passed on to small there they go up in flames <laughs> um right question 10. nine nine even oh <laughs> my i've just skipped question sorry back again hold on ignore me fine plastic film so tubs of strawberries, tubs of yogurt, tubs of pretty much everything with a thin plastic film lid. But how do you dispose of yours? Um, same as the rest of it, all in the bin. Recycling bin, same as the tub. See, I separate the two. The tub goes in the recycling and the film goes in the, the film goes in the bin. Sorry, ignore that. Typo there. Launch polling.
any more for any more? Anybody else? Before I end the poll. Um, I'll come back to the questions in the chat shortly. So I'm going to end the polling from there on that question. So yes, the answer is doo -doo -doo -doo, C. Um, they all, all this sort of thin film does need to go into the bin. Um, the punnet would need to go into the recycling bin and the thin film goes into the waste bin as that can't be recycled. It's too flimsy and it has no value. Um, however, if your lid does have an aluminium Try, um, lid, then it can go in the recycling bin. You can sort of test whether something is aluminium or plastic. Oh, my poles don't match the question. No, they didn't. C and D was a bit confusing. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Hopefully it's all That's back in line. <laughs> Hopefully it's all back in line now. Anyway, so um, you can tell if something's aluminium or plastic by doing the scrunch test. So if you, if you scrunch it and it holds its shape, then it's aluminium and it can go into the recycling bin. If it unfolds, then it's plastic and needs to go into the bin. Um, when you are recycling small bits of tin foil, so milk bottle lids or just little bits and pieces, um, it's worth scrunching them together so that they're the size of a tennis ball, um, at least. Um, this way they won't sort of slip through the conveyor belt at the material materials recycling facility um, and end up sort of being swept away to the incinerator. So make sure your make sure your recycling is the size of a tennis ball or bigger. It's particularly good to remember that at Easter time. Yes. Easter time chocolate eggs. Just keep all your foils. Yeah. Scrunch them up. Okay, so how hopefully we are all now on the right track. Question 10. 10. Oh, there was a bonus question. That's thrown the numbers. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so all that twice a day brushing has meant that your smile is amazing. But what about all those toothpaste tubes you're getting through? What's the best way to dispose of them? Is it A, as long as my mouth is so fresh and so clean, who cares? Is it B, uh, in the bathroom bin, along with all the other bathroom bins, obviously. Or C, I want the environment to be as clean as my mouth. I recycle them. If you'd like to cast your answers. We call the ding. <laughs> going, to, going to the dentist tomorrow. I'd like to see a dentist. It's been a long time. <laughs> any more any more votes to come in? Any more? Anybody else like to? Have a guess? No, so we've got lots of um, lots of B's and C's. And the correct answer is, sadly, it's B. Yeah, um, unfortunately, toothpaste tubes um, are one of those difficult to recycle mixed materials. So they need to go in the bin. Um, often the sort of, the well, every time they come in a pointless cardboard box. So that cardboard box can go in the recy recycling bin, but the tube has to go in the bin. Um, there is, they can be TerraCycled. So I don't know if people know about TerraCycle, where TerraCycle, their sort of, I don't know, opening line or whatever their tagline is, we recycle anything, like they will recycle anything. What they effectively do will downcycle everything into, a lot of time park benches, they do like a park bench TerraCycle from what I've seen of their work. So um, TerraCycle will take those, those it, it, they take difficult to recycle materials and recycle them. I guess they have like quantities of scale, so they get so many that it makes it cheaper, but they tend just to make really weird stuff. Um, in Hackney at Bulk Market, as I mentioned before, they have a TerraCycle collection box. So you can collect, um, so they'll collect toothbrushes, toothpaste, anything kind of teeth related. Um, you can recycle them at Bulk Market TerraCycle. Um, so strangely, so in the picture here, um, 
you can see the crest. Um, there's a sort of like a pump action tube. Um, and that actually, that can be recycled. Um, so if you have a hard plastic toothpaste with a pump action, you can put that in your recycling bin. But the majority of sort of soft, squidgy toothpaste tubes need to go into the bin. Um, um, as an alternative, if you're looking to sort of reduce your plastic waste, um, you can, you, there are loads of sort of alternatives out there that um, sort of either come in glass or various, you know, tin bottles or whatever. Um, these are my favorite, they're called Denta tabs. Um, and so they just come in a cardboard box and they're little, um, they're little tabs that you chew on um, and they contain fluoride and then you sort of chew them and then sort of get your toothbrush wet and then your foam's up and it's just like toothpaste, but without any of the waste. Um, and whilst I haven't seen a dentist for a while, I do still have all my own teeth and I've been using them for about two years now. So I highly recommend dental tabs if you want to reduce, reduce your plastic waste a little bit more. Oh, stop sharing those results. Okay, now on to the next question. Now, if you were paying attention earlier when Daisy was speaking, you should know this. I think she mentioned it. Oh, I didn't. I didn't say the number oh, specifically. No. I didn't mention. Okay, well, no. I'm just gonna have to guess then. Um, how much waste could be diverted from incineration by the move to fortnightly bin collections? Um, none. It's just being done to save money. B. Two thousand two hundred fifty tons. Two hundred two thousand two hundred fifty tons. The equivalent of 225 bin lorries. C, 4,500 tons, the equivalent of 450 bin lorries. Or D, 1,125 tons, the equivalent of 112 bin lorries. And I think, Dotty, am I right? Is that, that's per week. Per, per week, the bin lorries. I think it's per year. Year? Per year. Oh, is it a year? That'd be amazing if it was per week. That is a lot. Sorry, that's really not thinking there. Sorry, that's me. Just not thinking. Um, so has everyone got their answers in? I think they do. I'm going to end the polling um, and share the results. So the answer, 63%, most people have got it right. The answer is C. 400 tons of waste, the equivalent of waste contained in 450 bin lorries would be recycled instead of being incinerated every year. Got it. I know it's every year, it's in my own answer. Anyway, moving to fortnightly bin collections has been proven to increase the amount recycled. Um, it will also lead to a reduction in air pollution on our streets, as obviously we don't have um, all of those bin lorries making so many journeys, um, which is only a good thing. Um, and fortnightly waste collections with continued weekly recycling and food waste collection will also have further benefits. If used correctly, the new wheelie bins for non-recyclable waste, so we'll, you'll only be getting a wheelie bin for non-recyclables, you won't be getting a wheelie bin for your um, recycling, that will remain that sort of green sack system. Um, um, an increased rate of food recycling will help to improve hygiene and improve sort of smells on our streets. So. We think it's a brilliant idea. We were fully supporting this idea because so much being recycled that isn't being recycled. So bring on the fortnightly bin collection. And after all of this, you're gonna have so many ideas for reducing your waste that you'll just, you won't need a bin anyway. Okay, next question. Um, bottle tops. Tops on or tops off? <laughs> When I'm recycling my milk bottles or any other kind of plastic bottle, should I leave my top on or off? And we're talking about the bottle here, not your own. <laughs> if only I was wearing a gold lame jacket, this would just be so amazing. I'm getting really into my quizzing now. So I'm gonna oh yeah, I need to launch the polling. I'm not doing my job here. So tops off. They're different colours, so they need to be recycled separately. Tops on, they're the same plastic, so it doesn't matter. Tops off, God knows where I threw the lid. The bottle is lucky to be making it into the recycling bin. Or D, tops on. Smaller bits of plastic like lids can get lost in the roof and may end up being swept away, destined for incineration. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna end the polling. So, bit of, so we've got 38% saying tops on, 38% saying tops off. And a couple of people that have no idea where that lid's ended up. So, the answer is A. Um, so yeah, plastic cap should be removed from the plastic bottle, however, also put into your recycling bag. Um, this is so that the colored lids are captured separately to the clear bottles, making a much sort of cleaner stream of recycling. So yes, I must admit, even I thought it was D, but it, I was wrong. It's A, tops off, tops off everyone. Um, not today. Not today. It's not a tops off day. Oh. It's a very good website called Top Taps on or Taps on or Taps off about whether it's raining or not in Scotland, which this question reminded me of. Anyway. Okay. Next question. I would like to introduce everyone to my beautiful home. Hope you like what I've done with the place. I quickly ran a hoover around before you arrived. So um, it's looking lovely and clean. Um, but what other rooms in the house generate a lot of plastic waste other than the kitchen and therefore could do with a secondary recycling bin? Um, it's the bedroom, the living room, the bathroom, or D, the hallway. Where do you think could do with having another bin? Oh, oh, a few different ideas there. Anyone, any more? Any more for any more? You've got lovely weather in your bathroom in Hackney today. It is glorious. Okay. <laughs> I think I've got the best view in Hackney of my view <laughs> yeah. of bathroom. Very hard to get that view in Hackney. I made it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to end the polling. So a bit of a bit of a split there. So we've had, oh, had 100% of the bathroom. I can't work out these percentages. We've got more than 100%. Anyway, multiple so choice. A bit of a split. Oh yeah, multiple choice. You can have more than one. Oh, that's mm -hmm. true. Oh. Anyway, the answer is C, in my glorious bathroom. <laughs> and everyone else's bathroom. So yeah, all those shampoo poo and shower gel bottles, the deodorant, like I said, the compaction toothpaste tubes, they can all be recycled and should be separated from your other bathroom waste. Um, as well as plastic, so you've got the inners from toilet rolls, you've got spray deodorants that come in an aerosol can, um, empty perfume bottles, aftershave and face cream bottles that are all sort of glass, they can all be recycled too. However, please remember only flush the three Ps. These are the only things that should be going down your toilet. Um, if it's not in your recycling bag, it should be in a bathroom bin. Um, so, you know, cotton buds, toothpaste tubes, I think we've got a slide with the, the dirty dozen, toothpaste tubes, toothbrushes, sanitary products, nappies and so on, should all be placed in the dustbin, as I like to call the biohazard bin. You know, all that sort of anything bodily put it in the bin, apart from the three Ps, which go down the loo. So that was all starting to rhyme a bit. So yeah, three Ps down the loo, everything else in the bin. Yes. Um, yeah, lots of grim blockages and things happening, this stuff going down the loo. And if anybody actually, sort of- Do you know that um, there's been a problem with more fat bugs than normal in London since the outbreak of um, coronavirus, because when, uh, when people ran out of loo paper, they were flushing um, wipes down the loo and they're also oh. using kitchen towel. Oh. And it's what meant that there's been work. a really big increase in the blockages. So. Yeah. And then these blockages as well, you know, taking it back to Hackney, um, you know, with the heavy rain um, that we've had as well recently, that kind of like flash sort of sudden rain um, and all these blockages. So we're getting overflows from the sewerage network. So the River Lee, I don't know if anybody has been to the Hackney beach recently. Um, beach in the loosest possible way it's that you know basically the river lee but people have been swimming in there that is just absolutely chock-a-block full of quite frankly feces it's like an eco life fest down there so um please don't swim in the river lee it's really grim it's just so much sewage pumped into there all through the olympic park 
it's really grim. Surfers Against Sewage actually have a petition to sign to kind of get some more stuff done about this because it's really it's not great. We can share that. We can share all these kind of bits and pieces afterwards. So, um, and if you are sort of looking to cut down on your plastics, um, the bathroom is a really great place to start actually because there are loads of products where you can switch out these everyday plastics for reusables. So, um, you know, even sort of, you know, I really recommend, I mean, in Lush, I know it's quite, quite an overpowering smell, but if you're kind of starting your journey on reducing your plastic, a trip to Lush is really brilliant. They sell so many different products that, you know, that just come in bar form that can replace shampoo, conditioner, face wash, all of this, all in just solid bars, which look like soap. Um, so they're really brilliant. You know, and then there's things like uh, stainless steel safety razors that can replace um, disposable plastic razors and last forever. Um, and then my people, people with periods, I would like to talk moon cups. <laughs> if you'd like to switch to reusable menstrual products, then you've come to the right place. Um, we're pretty evangelical about them. Um, and we can talk more about them in the Q&A after the quiz. So if you have any plastic free period questions or any other questions for that matter, we will answer them at the end of the quiz. Okay. So on to our next question. Only two to go. Two to go, people. Oh. Fingers on buzzers or mouse keypads. Your kettle has broken. It's an absolute disaster. All that tea drunk over lockdown it was never told that it was going to happen. The kettle is brewed. It's fast blast brew. What do you do? Do you A, enter full on panic mode? I need my tea. Do you B, chuck it in the bin and head straight to Argos for a new one? C, boil water on the hob until you get it fixed? Or D, it's totally kaput. Recycle it in one of the on street small waste electronic bins. Polling is open. Some very conscientious people so far. <laughs> know what they're doing with their electronic waste. Anyone else? A few more people. Anyone else going to hazard a guess at what you would do? One more. Any more? Conferring. I think we need a countdown clock. Okay, I'll mate. be the countdown clock. Do -do 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 right. I'm going to end polling now. Polling ended. I'm going to share the results. So C and D was the most popular. And um, correct. Well done to the people. Um, that is correct. So here at Plastic Free Hackney, um, we, we like to make sure that we get the most out of everything we buy. We don't like buying things willy nilly. Um, so we started to buy better quality products that hopefully last longer or if possible can be fixed. Um, so an example is a Jewelit toaster, which um, whilst it costs a bit more, every single part of that toaster can be replaced and fixed at home, um, meaning that you'll never need to buy a toaster again. And that's the kind of that's the kind of product we like. We are not big fans of obsolescence and kind of things breaking, wearing out. However, if your product does break down, there's a brilliant organization in Hackney called the Hackney Fixers, um, who will have a go at fixing anything electronic that has broken down. So you could try going to Hackney Fixers first. There was an event that was due to happen in September, but I've just seen that that's been pushed back to January now, um, I guess due to the end of the world pandemic. Um, so yeah, um, but you know, if it is beyond repair, then it still can be recycled. It shouldn't go in the bin, um, but it shouldn't go in your green sack. It should go in one of the on-street waste electronic bins. So which daisies, they often, you know, you can see they often sort of next to a trade bin and stuff like that. It's the little gray, the little gray bin where you can put small sort of household electronics um, in. Um, there are a couple of, um, websites so where you can log on to find out where your nearest electronic waste recycling bin is um i think this this the second link on there recycle your electric electricals is a new campaign that's just launched trying to get people to recycle electric electric sort of gadget things more um and you can find the details of about two thousand plus 
recycling, repair and reuse points across the UK where you can drop off unwanted or broken items. Because also unwanted items is a huge thing. You know, we've all got that drawer of stuff, cables and so on. Um, and the issue with this is aside from the plastic, which we, you know, we tend to see the most of the plastic, um, all of these gadgets all contain valuable raw materials, including copper, gold, aluminium and steel. Um, and here's a fun fact for you. If just the old laptops in UK homes were recycled, it would provide enough aluminium to produce 150, 159,000 bikes. So there's a lot of aluminium in these what seem like plastic laptops. Um, so it's really important. So remember everything with a plug, a battery or a cable should be recycled. You know, everything from an iPhone cable, to a broken pair of headphones, they should be being put into that electronics bin. And especially, you know, anything with a, with that bin symbol on the pro on that slide, that is a key indicator that it should not be going in the bin. Um, yeah, so I have a bag on the go at home and everything just goes in the bag. And then once that bag is full, I take it to the electric point. So there we go, it's your electronic waste. And now onto your final question, guys. It's a beautiful sunny day and you've been in the park with your friends having a COVID safe, physically distanced picnic. It's time to pack up and go home. Do you, A, leave your bottles, cans and wrappers under a tree? Your litter is keeping someone else in a job. B, sort out your waste and divide it between the recycling and waste bins in the park. C, bag it up neatly and leave it next to the bin. Unfortunately, you can't put it in because the bin's full. Or D, take it all home to sort, rinse, and put in the recycling bin. If you'd like to place um, one. This, uh, this rather charming picture is shows a new item on the market, which is a um, physically distanced, COVID-friendly um, picnic setup. So that you can actually sit in your allocated two meter safe spot. Even as a dog. I mean, people will literally... <laughs> people will literally buy everything. The consumer, you know, if it's there, people will buy it. And people will Don't make they look it. happy? <laughs> uh, can you imagine peak, it? It's just peak consumerism. This is one of George Monbiot's peak consumerist moments. Anywho, so I think we've got all the votes in. We've got... And I'm going to share the results. So the majority of you went for D with a B and the answer is D. I mean, B is kind of correct. You know, like we do have these on street facilities. However, um, however, however, the best way of making sure that your recycling is actually recycled is by using your weekly recycling collection at home. Um, whilst it's great that we have all these collections on the on street ones, the collections are frequently contaminated with non-recyclables such as food waste and so especially when the uh, during the weekend lots of people have been out drinking that's when these bins just become a massive free-for-all so like we said before council's budgets have been cut cleaning up the parks comes out of the council's budget money that could be spent on our libraries and schools um, it costs one hundred and fifty thousand pounds each year just to clean london fields um, so we can all make that job slightly easier by taking our rubbish and recycling home with us um, and if it's a lot Bagging up your rubbish and be next to the bin has a mess. Rats and foxes will rip it open. Half find a coffee burger and spread the litter across the park. Or it'll be picked up by a gust of wind blown into the Park Street Canal. If the bin is full, the bin is full. Please take your rubbish home. So there we go. And that is the end of our Know Your Plastics quiz. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> um, Thanks for coming along, guys. Um, before you've all been, do you like that? You've all been magnificent, marvelous. Um, oh, look, somebody needs to go. But prizes. So we will be in touch with prizes. There are prizes for everyone because you've all been magnificent players. <laughs> so we will get in touch with all of you um, by email. But before we go, um, well, so we're going to have a bit of a Q and A at the end of the session. Um, so if you've got any further questions that you'd like to ask us, please enter them into the chat or, oh no, there's a Q&A section. I forgot about that. There is an actual Q&A section. So you can answer. Yep, so Clee, would it be possible 
um, let us know for the source for stats. Yes, of course, we can let you know all our sources. Um, that is not a problem. Um, so if anybody has any other questions about anything recycling plastic related, Dottie is also here from the council. So if there's anything we don't know, she should know it. Um, she will know it, I should say. I'll do my best. Um, for your knowledge that you've shared, but uh, I'm here to help if anyone does have a question. Good. So yeah, so feel free to put in the um, either in the chat or the Q and A questions, and we'll try and answer those. And then we'll be in touch afterwards. Um, uh, yeah, and feedback as well. I'm going to launch a couple of feedback polls now as well. Um, which, if you could answer before you go, we'd really, really appreciate that. So, um, feedback. And I'm also just going to say, uh, if you've enjoyed it, um, please tell a friend, especially if it's somebody who doesn't really care. Um, we'd really like to be, you know, engaging with more and more people who, to just to show that, you know, these are really simple changes that we all should and all have to be making. Um, we are, so this quiz is being held again uh, next Thursday, the 16th of July at 7 p.m and the Thursday after on the 23rd of July at 2 p.m. But we will email those dates out to you um, with a link for where to get the tickets, the free tickets. Yes, um, yeah, so the poll is now live, the feedback poll, which is, and this is anonymous, so um, you can just fill that in, it's all anonymous. It's just a few things that um, it's useful for us to know. Um, okay, so. Oh, thank you very much for the kind words in the chat. It's very nice. I'm going to go to the Q&A now because there's a question. So um, is there a difference for you between the tins and line tins when recycling? Oh. So um, I don't think so. I think you recycle all of them. Dottie? Yeah, I'm not quite sure what a lined tin is. I'm it's got a very, very thin line of plastic. You know, Sometimes like with tin tomatoes, you can especially see it. Yes, okay, I know what you mean. I think what happens is, I'm pretty sure that you, you can recycle them, and what happens is during the process, it, when the, it comes off, like at some point that it's, because they're all heated or whatever, so that thin plastic then floats off or whatever. So um, yeah, so you can recycle both of them. And if anyone thinks of any questions after they leave this that they want to find out about that you might, you might, you know how it always happens like five minutes after you've left something, um, you can always email us. Uh, yeah. All of our details are on the, the Hackney Council website so you can get in touch with any further questions. Yeah. Um, so is it good, to, there's a question, um, is it good to reuse as well as recycling? And the firm answer to that is yes. Oh. 100% recycling, you've got the, your, your waste bin, which goes to, um, um, you've got your waste bin, which is kind of your last resort. Then you've got your recycling bin, which is kind of your next, second best thing. Your first best thing is to reuse in the first place, is to reuse, to reuse, to reuse, and to not buy that product in the first place, you know, to reuse what you have at home. So we're all for reusing, you know, don't buy plastic, um, you know, if you're growing seeds, this is something in lockdown, you know, instead of buying plastic plant pots for growing seedlings, a yogurt pot, you know, yogurt pots are the same as a plastic plant pot, just stuff some holes in the bottom and you can grow seeds from in there. It's just about sort of thinking out of the box and thinking about your waste in a different way and thinking, A, how can I avoid that waste in the first place? And then B, how can I reuse that waste so it isn't waste, so it's now a resource? Um, so yeah, hundred percent. Um, there was also, uh, so when we were talking earlier about one of the questions about the non-recyclable things and there was the padded envelope and you were saying, you know, collect things, collect things that, um, you don't use, for example, jiffy bags, because, uh, resources like, um, next door are a brilliant way of passing on things that you don't use because something that's not useful to you will be useful to someone else, especially if it's free. And it's also a really nice way of just connecting with your community and getting to know your neighbours. And I've, I've made friends through passing on things and collecting things that other people didn't want. And so, for example, you know, if you have got a whole load of, if you've bought some plants and you know that you're not going to need those plant pots, then keep the plant pots, you know, post them on a group like next door or free cycle. Um, and, you know, there are lots of Facebook, local Facebook groups as well. And there will always be somebody who wants them. 
Yes. Um, I'm just going to share the second part of the feedback poll. Um, oh, a very nice message from Clee Lumley. Thank you very much. Um, oh, nice words. Kingston together for plastic free tips. Thank you. Um, how do you try to speak to people who don't think about these things? Well, Richard, um, I guess through things like this, <laughs> we're trying to engage people, you know, in different ways. So, you know, if you thought the quiz was fun and you thought that it might engage someone that you know that um, doesn't think about these things, then, you know, tell them to come along to the next one. Um, we'd love to see them. Um, oh, hello, Amanda. Um, <laughs> this is Amanda, the Hackney Recycling Guru. Um, I think I've seen on the front page of the Guardian recently for creating <laughs> no waste. The man is a zero waste warrior. That's probably changed a bit since uh, lockdown, but yeah, yeah. it's like a grizzly bear. It, it's, I think I'm not so worried about lockdown. I'm more worried about uh, my partner maybe creating more waste because I keep chasing him. Yes, no, that is true. Lockdown has created more waste, but. Um, um, well, yeah, Richard, yeah we, tr we try and try many different ways to engage with people. Um, I think I think there's also an interesting thing about lockdown where because we're all at home more we're much more conscious about the waste that we are creating so all of the stuff that normally you would be able to get rid of whilst you're out and about isn't happening because you're at home so it's a it's a true reflection of how much how much waste we generate I think but maybe I, that last year last year when I did zero waste I was thinking oh I don't really produce that much waste it's, like you said because I was going to restaurants and I, I was shifting the waste into into pubs externalizing and your waste ander <laughs> um, if i could just add to richard's question as well yeah i think that one of the, my favorite tips that i've heard is that if, if you're trying to engage with someone who doesn't really do many of these behaviors yet is to start with something so simple but specific because quite often when you just say you should recycle more even that can be quite a difficult concept so maybe talking to people about a particular material and exactly what they should do with it. So I'm going to jump on Dottie's point to say a nice one is, um, especially if it's somebody who, who drinks alcohol. Um, so, you know, a really good place to start is just really encouraging people to not buy a bottle of water and just carry your own water bottle around. And it is safe to be refilled during COVID. It's, it's fine. People are doing it. Um, but, uh, there's a nice statistic, another fun fact, where whereby the markup, if you are to buy a bottle, of, a plastic bottle of water, the markup is the equivalent of going into the pub and asking for a pint of beer and it costing you two and a half thousand pounds. And that is a good way to get a lot of people to think, hmm, maybe I don't need to buy that bottle of water. So there's always the kind of, you know, spin it on its head because it's cheaper. Um, I'd say, it's quite uh I'd, I'd recommend not not getting too judgy pants on people because as soon as you start kind of saying um extolling how good you are other people tend to stop listening so talking about your bottle of water being that expensive is is a good good tactic that's another really good point as well that everyone's motivated by something different so I think for everyone here on this panel, the environmental reasons will be a huge driver for us. But then for some people, it might be more cost. It might be the more availability of products. So there's kind of, I think that's another important way to talk to people is to find out maybe what they could benefit from it. Or you're on mute, I think, Tina. Can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Can hear you now. Anyway, um, we hear your sigh. Yeah, the um, I think also if you, you know, I think the things that you do rub off on people around you. So without sort of, you know, hammering the point home too much, just by making little changes around you, I think you can subconsciously influence people to make those changes, um, you know, whether it's very slow or subtle, but, you know. So yeah, just persevere, perseverance. You'll get there, Richard. Perseverance with a smile. Yeah, with a smile. No one likes being shouted at. I can, I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> um, uh, does anybody have any other questions? Um, oh, are schools receptive? So yeah, schools are massively receptive. Like the kids are, the kids are on it. The kids, 
you know, the kids are going home and telling their parents to recycle that, you know, they're the ones that are really on it. Um, which is amazing, you know, that's, it, it should be, you know, this the schools on so many levels, I think, need to really get on board with this. You know, they're educating the children of the future. It's a massive education that they, you know, they need on this aspect. You know, this is also the, the they're the young people that are going to live in, on this planet, you know, when the teachers are all dead, quite frankly, you know, they need to be preparing them for a cleaner, greener world. Um, but yeah, they are really receptive. Um, so that's Actively. brilliant. Um, we are going to be working with the schools. We've been working with the schools for like 15 years in Hackney. So just to be of intro, I'm Hackney Council Recycling Manager. Um, and we are going to be delivering eco school program uh, from September onwards. Um, we want to get up to 10 schools to sign up with uh, our, our recycling team in the environmental services. So if you know of any schools that are kind of like this uh, undecided or they want to do some some kind of eco schools we will pay for the fee um and yeah so we we will have someone dedicated in our team to do the environmental education services um and it will include recycling but it would also include other sustainable um subjects like biodiversity um carbon water and other things so it'll be quite good right how do we get in touch if schools are interested so um Email you, Anda. Yeah, I mean, you can tweet in Green and Hackney or you can email recycling at hackney.gov.uk. Recycling at hackney. I'm going to write that in here in the chat. Recycling at hackney. Recycling yeah. at hackney.gov.uk. Um, yeah. So there, Eleni, it's in the, um, or, sorry, I wrote it to Eleni, it's to Ella. Um, it's in the, if you email that recycling at hackney.gov.uk, then they'll get back to you with information yeah. about the program. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we, we, we will have that. We also uh, come we, into sorry. schools and, sorry, Andy, you go. Go. Uh, we would also, as part of that, we will be able to pay uh, towards training to teachers for the um, UN certified yeah. climate change uh, teaching sessions, something like that. So we. Uh, that, that is coming from the council as well. So we will more than happy to get more teachers to be the, like the green spokespersons of today for tomorrow. Well, we don't really have much though, isn't it? Five years before we get to two, two degrees warming. And then anyway, let's just keep positive, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> My husband is already fed up with me. So I don't want to like bring <laughs> down everyone with me. But at least it's not that hot today, so it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. raining. Fine. It's fine. Nothing's happening. It's cold today. It's not happening. It's not a lie. Um, I'm not done. I'm not done yet. Okay, bye, Eleni. Has to leave. Bye. Um, are there any other questions? And also, I think what Daisy was going to say is that we also come in as Plastic Free Hackney and are more than happy to come into school. So, so we have a little thing that we do. So you can um, email us. I'm just going to pop in our email address. Um, if you'd like us to come in chat at your school. Um, does anybody have any more questions? I know this is ending at three, which ended a minute ago. So if everybody needs to go, that's fine. But if anybody has any more questions, then we're happy to stay and answer them. Um, if not, we will say goodbye. Also, if you've got any glowing comments of praise that you'd like to pop into the chat, then do pop in a glowing comment of praise and then we can tell the council how successful it was. But Dottie so and I know that. And yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Dottie, I don't know Calandra and Dottie. Yeah. <laughs> Calandra and Dottie, how fun it's been. <laughs> well, I'd be really interested to know if there was anything that really surprised anyone from that session. Yeah. What was the one thing that you had no idea? You can let us know that as well. Anyone? I don't know if anyone's still here. They might have gone. Because <laughs> I came here and they went, oh shit, he's here. I'm going to end. And I'm going to end live streaming this. Yes, we will email the answers. We'll send you a little information pack afterwards. But um, you mustn't, if we do that, you mustn't then give the answers yeah. to somebody that somebody that you know is going to do the quiz, because that would be cheating. Armed with the answers. Yeah, exactly. Anybody who gets 100% right and we're going to know. Suspicious. Uh, 
Um, okay, so. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end streaming it on YouTube live. Goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye. Thank you.